Tonight on 7 News, rapists and child molesters in the military falling through the cracks. We expose hundreds of military sex offenders who are not appearing on public registries and sex offender registries, lists that are put in place to help keep your family safe. National investigative correspondent Mark Greenblatt exposes military sex offenders flying under the radar. They fight for duty, honor, and country. But some break the code, committing sexual assault while inside the ranks and flying under the radar when they get out. Army Specialist Basil Dwayne Kingsbury is part of a three-state manhunt. Right now, we don't know where he is. The Army convicted him of rape and forcible sodomy. Sentenced to 11 years, he was back on the streets by 2005, but... He needs to register. Last June, Kingsbury was arrested at this South Carolina apartment complex for domestic violence. Deputies never knew he needed to register, so he was released. How could that happen? That's unclear to me right now. I wish I could tell you. I really don't know. The military has no power to register offenders on its own, relying on civilian officials instead. In an unprecedented review, the Scripps National Investigative Team looked through over 1,000 court-martial cases involving sex offenses, searching registries across all 50 states, discovering hundreds disappearing off the grid into neighborhoods across America. Federal law requires civilian sex offenders to register before they're released. Not so for military sex offenders. The Department of Defense trusts the criminals to register themselves after they get out when they become the problem of civilian officials. The Army convicted Private First Class Zyman Casey for indecent acts on a young girl. He never registered after moving to Houston. Texas finds no record of being told he was coming, but Casey found a new victim. He's now serving 16 years in Texas for aggravated sexual assault of a child, which is why we went looking for this unregistered sex offender. Have you found Basil Kingsbury yet? Not yet. You're looking? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're looking. He's Vernon Keenan, director of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, which had Kingsbury in its sights nine years ago. In Georgia, he would have to register for life. But investigators mistakenly thought the military conviction was overturned, so they ruled he didn't have to register. They even sought clarification from the Army, but... We have no record of them responding. Keenan now points to a recent report from the DOD's own inspector general as fuel for reform. It concluded this August that not registering the military zone while still behind bars enables offenders to evade registration. The Pentagon acknowledges what it calls gaps and says it's developing a new policy to better notify states. As for registering military offenders before they're released, a senior defense official explained this is not one of our primary missions in life, adding in an era of budget cuts, it could cost millions. What would your message, Director, be to the Department of Defense if they don't embrace change on this issue? I can't imagine they're not going to embrace change. I mean, this is too serious of a matter. Now, the Pentagon has said repeatedly that it does not condone in any way what it calls the heinous actions of sex offenders. But here at the nation's capital tonight, member of the House Armed Services Committee, Jackie Speer, is gearing up to step in. And as for Basil Kingsbury, that Army rapist, well, he remains unregistered as a sex offender as of this hour and could be in any neighborhood in America. Live at the Capitol, I'm Mark Greenblatt. and back over to you. And this investigation has already ignited a fire on Capitol Hill where lawmakers are demanding change. Now, tomorrow night, part two of this investigation. In the meantime, you can log on to the DenverChannel.com to search our database of military sex offenders.